Trey gives an update, Monsoon gets a moving, and the Dead Bod team build a beetle all this week in Robot Combat. Hello and welcome to This Week in Robot Combat, thank you once again for joining me. Let's start off with some news from BattleBots. Trey Roski, co-founder of BattleBots, appeared on the Behind the Bots podcast in the week, giving an update about the plans for how a 2020 season could look. Obviously, COVID-19 is still a big issue, so the first takeaway was there probably wouldn't be a studio audience for this. There would also potentially be a lot of testing and segmentation of the pits so that there are people in smaller groups. Lex and Barrier's arena side would protect Roboteers from each other and from the contagion spreading. And to reduce the risk of infection, a smaller field could be planned as well. Meanwhile, there's still travel bans around the world, but teams from international countries, if they did still wish to come across, so long as there wasn't a travel ban, would need to self-isolate for two weeks either side of filming. Throughout, Trey made sure that it was made clear that they wouldn't run a season if they couldn't do it safely. The decision whether there would be a 2020 season or not has not yet been decided. If you wish to listen to the interview yourself, check out Behind the Bots podcast on your favourite podcasting apps. This week, Team Monsoon revealed full pictures of the new look Monsoon. This thing is awesome. It is so small, compact, but yet ever so deadly. Here is a side-by-side, -side, in fact, of the two CADs of the last season version and this season's. It is a lot smaller, as you can see in real life as well. Looking forward to seeing Monsoon in action. And you don't have to wait too long because over on the Tom Brewster YouTube channel, there is a full drive test of Monsoon driving around. It is pretty quick, pretty agile, a little bit slippy, as Tom says, but it is awesome to see. Excellent work, Team Monsoon, and well done for also getting it in weight this season. No small feat, I can tell you that. The Double Jeopardy team did a video of the new look Double Jeopardy once again. They're showing off how they made it even smaller, sleeker, so that they can reach smaller robots with their cannon. It is three shots this season, remember, and this section on the top that helps to shoot the cannon is going to be mounted on the top and very well protected, say the team. It's exciting to see Double Jeopardy getting into shape. And the new look extinguisher photos were released of it this week and it looks absolutely awesome. It showed off in two formats, the fork setup and the anti-spinner front wedge, which looks awesome as well. Very excited to see extinguisher back in the box and Ninaring around. Up next, some news from the UK live circuit. The team behind Extreme Robots had a successful live stream earlier in the week for their new venture, Real Things Played Online. This time, the red and blue robots went head to head in the arena for anyone to play with, and it was awesome fun, according to all my sources. I believe uh, your own Liev Lu, friend of the channel, is doing a video on this as we speak, so look out for that over on his channel. And sticking with Extreme Robots, the next Roboteers in Lockdown interview will be with Team Eruption's Michael Oates. Make sure you look out for that over on the Extreme Robots social media pages. Next up, Team ULL have been designing a Beetleweight version of their Heavyweight Deadbod. This is going to be a testing platform for how to run different setups in Heavyweight configuration later on down the line. But the Beetleweight version is looking very slick, very cool, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing it in action hopefully sometime very soon. Team Ogrekill have been test driving their new Featherweight Shrek Force ahead of the Featherweight Robo Dojo event that is coming either next week or the week after, I forget which. I look forward to seeing the power of Shrek Force in the arena when it debuts very, very soon. 2.0, the heavyweight continues its construction and now it has a little bit of a paint scheme going. It's looking very sleek, very slick, and I'm looking forward to seeing it when it debuts in the UK. A Beetleweight version of Team Tilly's F7 is competing on the Beetleweight scene. It debuted at the Beetle Meet for Robo Dojo last weekend. It looked very dominant and I'm very excited to see it in action in full competition sometime soon. And there's a new version of Team Health and Safety's Head for the Exit. This is the team that brought us Wee Woo in Bugglebots and this overhead sawbot looks very, very cool indeed, sporting the usual safety colours. Within the next couple of hours, the auction will end for 
an actual piece of robot history. It is a table made out of what used to be Iron Ore 3, which became Team Shock's Earthquake 1. It is collection in person. It is currently 50 quid on eBay. Make sure to check it out if you want a cool robot table. Lastly, let's take a look at the wider media. Let's see what's going on there. Jim Dramatic's back with the robots that never were featuring Anderson 932 and myself talking about nine robots that never made it into the arena. In this episode, we bring a mix of modern and classic robots, including Phage, pictured here as a chicken nugget. And Sam 64 and team are back for the Robocast, this time talking about the first World Championships. Be sure to check that out over on his channel if you wish to travel back in time and relive some Robot Wars classic action. And that's just about all for this time. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a like. Do subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I shall see you again very soon for more news. Goodbye. What he said. <laughs>